Welcome back after the break. Um, just before we went for our break, we started studying or looking at chapter eight, the citywide church. Okay. So we said the citywide church comprises of the local churches. Okay. Why is it important for the citywide church to come together and work together in unity, oneness? Or why is it important for the local churches in the city to come together, partner with each other? Okay, the Anand says it represents the unity in the body of Christ. Okay, can you pass him the mic, please? Okay, it shows people that we're all establishing one kingdom. We're here to establish one kingdom. Okay, what else? What happens when all the local churches uh, come together or the citywide church is one? What happens? It is easy to uh, reach out to people in, in the city, in the city, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Very important. Please say that in the mic so all of the students can hear. So there may come a revival. Yes, there'll come a revival. Okay. What else happens? Online students, what happens when? The citywide church is one, and all the local churches come together in unity and oneness. Kingdom of God will be advanced. The kingdom of God will be advanced. Okay. Uh, online students, any answers? You can type it in the chat or you can uh, unmute and speak. <laughs> there will be greater harvest. There will be greater harvest. Okay. The whole city can. You know, uh, we can reach out to the whole city and we can even disciple the whole city, right? Whole city can be transformed and changed, okay? Uh, not only in terms of uh, accepting Christ, but also, yes, the moral sphere, the political sphere, very good. What else? There will be no crimes, yes, we've seen that. Okay, so what can the uh, what are some of the things that um, uh, the citywide church can do to you know when they come together in unity and oneness? Anthony says there'll be revival. Yes, thank you. Just like you, uh, that Rin said. Okay, or before we answer that question, um, for the citywide church to be one, uh, who needs to take the initiative? The pastors, the shepherds, the leaders. Okay, why is it important for the leaders and the shepherds to take the initiative? Okay, they are the head of that certain local body. So, if the head comes together, the body also comes together. Yes, if the head comes together, the body will also come together. If the head is disconnected, the body will also be uh, disconnected, okay? So for the leaders or the pastors or the shepherds uh, in the city, for them to come together, what should they do? How can they come together? They also should have the same vision of one kingdom like this. Okay, they should be kingdom-minded in the first place. Thank you. What else? They should not just know each other's names and what they do, which church they're pastoring. What do you think they should do? They should know the vision, listen to each other. Okay, Anand says they should be led by the Holy Spirit. They should come together, right, to build a relationship of trust, respect, fellowship, and sharing right okay how can they go about doing that meeting regularly, meeting regularly okay so uh, you know pastor has written these books kingdom of god and kingdom builders and he truly has a kingdom mindset he truly sees apc as a church that is here to enhance and further the kingdom of god so he has taken some steps you know what are some of the steps apc has taken 
Yeah, the men's breakfast fellowship. Have you gone for that, Prince? Okay. Uh, pastor started the uh, the men's, uh, not men's, sorry. He started the pastor's, uh, uh, oh, you said men's breakfast. No. It's the pastor's fellowship, which is also breakfast, uh, you know, uh, gathering. So he started something called every, uh, once in a month on uh, Wednesdays. It's called the pastor's fellowship. So inviting pastors from all the churches in Bangalore City to come. We meet at 8 o'clock and uh, we start with worship and then one of the pastors lead in uh, prayer for the city and uh, churches in the city and for the nation and the nations. And then we um, uh, have breakfast together, get to know each other. And then there will be just one um, passage from scripture that we will take and we will all be in tables. So in that table, we'll discuss uh, some truths about kingdom building and kingdom mindset and you know, how we can further God's kingdom through unity and oneness. And then we all share our points and then, you know, we close uh, the, the meeting. I thought it, it was a very uh, good initiative. We stopped, uh, um, you know, when the pandemic began. Um, so that was one of the things. And another thing which we had once was on 15th August was a Sunday. So we had all the churches come together, you know, and worship. And nobody was on the stage uh, so nobody is given any preference, no pastors, everybody down together with all the other saints, other believers. And uh, there was worship. The worship had mix of various languages because there are people from different churches and contemporary worship and also hymns because some of them coming from churches where they sing only hymns as well. And then, you know, it was not uh, anything with uh, doctrines or liturgy and all. Just, you know, we met together commonly on the faith that we believe in. So it was just worship and then it was uh, prayer for the city um, and for our nation. And then we, somebody was to share the, God, the word of God. And, um, you know, we all had Holy Communion together. And it was a very beautiful time of gathering. No announcement, nothing, no anyone saying this pastor, this welcome, you know, that and all of those things. Just coming together and um, meeting. And I think it's a wonderful initiative to do these things, uh, to just partner and bring all of the churches to um, together. Okay. So uh, what do you think the citywide church can do towards city transformation? What can the citywide church do for city transformation? A city, I mean, uh, we can influence every uh, zone of people and uh, everyone, like actually through um, prayer, of course, then uh, literally helping them with the word or okay, discipling them. Oh, yeah. uh, every uh, all the people in the city and every area, every sphere of society. What is the different uh, spheres in society we have? Social. Economic, education, political, spiritual, what else? Very important. What gives the economy? Business, business, and also uh, social and also physical transformation. Okay. So, two things that uh, a citywide church can do. Okay. We can encourage partnership in things that are already been done. Okay, and uh, and as, uh, as as a citywide church, we can also start new initiatives. Now, uh, how can we en encourage partnership in the things that are already being done? What are the, some of the things that are, the local churches are already doing that all of them can come together, pool in their resources, and you know do it together so that we can transform the city? Any answers from our um, online students? Yeah, Nina John says we need to have regular meetings, yes, uh, of pastors and, you know, the churches meeting together, yes. What should we do? How can we encourage partnership in things that are already being done in our city? Coming together as a local, as a citywide church. Yes. Helping uh, kids, I mean, to educate the slum kids. Okay. Um, not only education, even food, okay. everything, helping okay. them to come up from that situation. Okay, good. What else? 
slum feeding the poor slum outreach feeding the poor equipping the marketplace you know also if uh, uh, you know uh, it, many churches are doing this what if we all pool in our resources and come and do it together huh huge and bigger and we can impact the whole city many can be benefited right uh, what if uh, you know uh, local churches part and christian organizations partner together suppose christian organizations are here christian ngos working with uh, in the prison you know uh, taking care of prison children uh, building marriages you know uh, all of these special ministries or de addiction centers what if you all come together and pool in our resources what will happen yeah, Nina says we can be very effective and we can impact the, uh, you know, uh, Anand says we can impact the whole city. Jackin says join together in evangelism, spreading the gospel to the unreached, um, the progress is more. Yes, we can reach the unreached in a great, uh, uh, you know, greater proportion in a greater uh, 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 manner, okay? Uh, also, if the richer churches come together and you know, give, it helps the poorer churches, the smaller churches, right? And we can give in to them, they can have their own place or music instruments, you know, some churches only have music instruments, chair for people to sit, they just sit on the ground, you know, and things like that. Or we can even provide them fans, okay? And also if the mature um, uh, churches come together, we can actually, what can they do? Better impart and equip and teach the newer churches and the smaller churches and equip the younger churches as well. Now, what are some of the challenges we can face when we do this? What are some of the challenges we face when we do this? Encourage partnership in things that are already being done. Huh? Differences in uh, between the pastors, okay. What else? Hmm. Like some pastors uh, refuse to even take help because of fear. Like if I take help from them later, they will ask me to make my church a part of their church. Someday. Okay, fear of losing their sheep. Okay, sheep stealing. Okay, what else? It's happening, yes. <laughs> There's no loyalty, no? Integrity will not be there. Honesty, integrity. What if some people are not kingdom-minded? And, you know, if some of them coming with their own I, me mindset, you know, um, personal agendas, greed, uh, it can be very devastating and can destroy the whole thing. Ah, Anand says, if they're giving something, they're expecting something. Also, we need to see that even if the local churches are coming together to partner, their individual mission and vision is being achieved and fulfilled even as they partner that means they are doing at the center of god's will what god wants them to do as a church now uh, what do you think can be the new initiatives that we can start as a citywide church new initiatives what are some of the new initiatives anyone the online students what are some of the new initiatives that uh, can be done in partnership with many churches and christian ministries Day out. <laughs> Day out, princess. Uh, what can be done? Volunteering to teach the word of God to people, even though they are they are part discipling. Of, you mean? Yeah. Ah, discipling. Okay. More like a little more. Okay. Maybe they, there is there, but. Equipping them more. Equipping them more, discipling them more, okay. Conducting workshops, okay. Conferences, okay. Weekend schools. Weekend schools. More prayer. Uh, 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 yeah, prayer it can, you know, you know, what a force it can be when the churches come together and pray, right? That is what God wants. John chapter 17. High priestly prayer. Jesus says, let them, Father, let them be one as we are. One. For them, unity is so important. Even as a trinity works in perfect unity. What are some of the initiatives? You know, rescuing children, 
uh, trafficked women, abused women, you know, uh, um, you know, teaching them, having schools for their for these children, you know, boarding, teaching them, giving them vocation, sending them into colleges. These women, we can teach them and train them to some vocations, which they can earn their own money, educate them. Okay, so some of these things are huge projects. But what if the local churches come to gather? Okay, uh, rescuing people on the streets, the poor people, you know, like Otto Raja is doing, but there are so many people there, you know, in Otto Raja's home. What if other churches just partner and give and you know what a great work we can do? Okay, what are some of the challenges we can face? Financial issues, yes. There's no integrity sometimes, yes. Also, uh, uh, the fear of pastors that they will lose their congregation, they'll go away to other churches, okay? So the, there should be clarity. The purpose is for us to come together to build God's kingdom, to transform the city. What else? What else? Pastor, about the congregation, if they come together and see, okay, the other church is better than us, or the teaching is better, it's normal that they may go, no? Yes, it's normal that they go, but uh, they will, you know, if they belong to that church, they will be faithful to that church. But even if they, even if they go, you know, the pastor should feel that they're going there to a place where they're receiving uh, more in terms of spiritual uh, food. So anyway, the kingdom of God is growing. So he should not feel the, you know, uh, yeah, he should not feel uh, insecure about it. Uh, so, Pastor. If People will go like this. Is that it? It should be. It should. It, that is wrong. If people choose to, okay, I'm going to some church. They think, okay, when they come together, they'll see that okay, they, the other churches they have a better teaching or a better way of explaining the word of God. Some of them may feel that okay, I need to better to move there. Is that wrong? It's not wrong. Why did? Why? Why do I say it's not wrong? Because it's all about God's uh, church. And, but yeah. then why pastors are thinking it that way? That's because they're not kingdom-minded. They're thinking about only their their church as their kingdom. They're not thinking, okay, this person is going and you know being built up uh, spiritually and they're going to anyway enhance the kingdom of God. They're going to come into their calling and their uh, purpose and they're going to build and extend God's kingdom, let them go. And if God is taking them, God is going to bring people into my church right one sows other reaps right uh, but ma'am like uh, to the standing like to the other question of what nina is that if somebody is going from one church to another church uh re uh read from pastor's book from code of honor pastor wrote like if somebody is coming from their church to our church this pastor also should not like since they come we should not take them but we should talk to them why they left the church yes and it's have important. to tell them like what what is the issue and if it is things like resoluble we we try to make them go back and serve their faithfully but we should not take them immediately and keep with us right yes that is very important entry and exit how you enter into somebody else's kingdom or uh, sorry somebody else's field and how you exit is very very important for god so even when they come to apc pastor meets with them and says why is the reason why you left the other church and if they want to become members of our church we, pastor says you have to give a letter to that to the other pastor or if they're part of our church in the staff they should all part of another church then they should also inform their pastor that they are part of you know the staff of uh, the church office here at apc yes so some of those things as pastors we need to do uh, do so that you know there is no uh, hurt between the pastors yeah nina john says keeping in mind the current situation people of other faiths may be suspicious of the church's motives yes uh, in what context you saying this nina Social work? Oh, you're talking about how other faiths yes. would be suspicious. No, I mean, this. Uh, are you able to hear me? 
Yes, okay? yes, we are. No, I, what I'm saying is that I mean this uh, to read to reach the city that we are, we're talking about reaching the city. So, which would mean whether it is people in the slums or women or various things, those kind of people who really need to be touched and uh, you know who need help in in different ways. So, when the church is coming together this way and uh, wanting to help in the various areas. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know because I really don't know how this thing works and how often the, these meetings happen. So it's possible that they can kind of say, OK, no, we rather not because of the general background that is there always when the church is doing anything in this region. They always feel it is because we want um, to, you know, get them to share of our faith. Isn't it? I mean, that that is, I thought. A general this thing that is there, the impression that is there in the minds of the people of other faiths, that this is the the, the agenda is this. I mean, they, I don't know. Some may may receive help, some may not. I I thought it could be a challenge. I'm not sure. Yes, yes. What you said is absolutely right. It can be a big challenge. Uh, in the present church, you know, thinking that uh, why are we doing all this coming together as a citywide church is to make more, uh, you know, converts, converting people. You know, yes, that can be a big challenge. But if you go according to the government and the uh, rules and the protocol that is there, uh, then, you know, uh, there can be no issues. Um, but yeah, the mindset is all this. But even if you see, uh, even if uh, we come together, there's hardly anything like that that is really being done. This is something that, you know, we, we've put it down for other people to think and we're teaching this so that other pastors can be kingdom minded, can come to that place. Um, but the impact we can have is we can reach a far greater audience. And also the, the government will also acknowledge, yes, there's work done, you know, people are reached, people are blessed, um, you know, uh, children are educated. Uh, rather than just looking at the, the, the aspect of you know, children are coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ, which is not like a major agenda, but actually enhancing the social, uh, uh, you know, uh, or empowering the government in, um, uh, you know, uh, transforming our city or the in, in providing infrastructure in the city uh, to these, uh, you know, people with the lower strata where things are not being done really. Uh, you know, the work can be acknowledged. And when people are really getting... Um, uh, their needs met, they will they will really understand what is the uh, motive behind why the churches are doing it. They're doing it so that, yeah, my children are educated and, you know, they are getting their food, clothing, shelter. They are learning manners. They are going to become someone big. They're not going to live like us in, in slums with no job. Um, and in the process, if they are encountering God, it's okay, but the, they, they're able to see the larger framework in which we uh, work. But yes, that is a challenge. What you are saying is absolutely um, right. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, even uh, like uh, Nina John men mentioned that we have to regularly meet, worship together, you know, have outreaches, uh, have uh, prayer times together. You know, prayer can be a very powerful weapon and tool in transforming our uh, city okay um, also meeting together and celebrating the lord's table can be a very powerful expression okay um, now we look at um, uh, we look at the, the spiritual transformation how we can bring about spiritual transformation we looked at some of the social transformation also when the churches come together we can actually uh, speak against the social evils what are some of the social evils we are facing in our city Poverty, yes, drug abuse, yes, corruption, yes, oppression, suicide, you know, can be another son. Um, what is another uh, social action? How can we work together as churches for social action in the city? You know, like we mentioned, you know, all of these uh, po providing for the poor, the homeless, orphans, caring for the widows, the, rest, the less privileged. How can we bring about transformation in the marketplace? Yeah. 
those of them in the marketplace like acknowledged or uh, uh, equipped actually mm -hmm. uh, to impact in the like area that... okay they can be equipped to uh, function as a kingdom works and they can bring in kingdom mentality kingdom culture kingdom lifestyle okay uh, in the um, in the the spheres of society what are seven spheres of society seven mountains family education okay art and entertainment media okay government and religion yes so we they can bring in god's kingdom god's culture god's lifestyle the kingdom culture kingdom lifestyle kingdom principles kingdom values and morals okay and also as believers who are working in the business place they can work in integrity and honesty and excellence and they can bring about that remember one man daniel was able to with his integrity and honesty bring about you know uh, was able to uh, make the king acknowledge that his god who his god is okay and also the people to acknowledge that the god of daniel is a true and living god what is the physical transformation help the government in better roads better infrastructure water transfer transportation huh? taxes how the taxes can be used uh, to build the infrastructure health hygiene okay good roads, good roads. yes create how to create more jobs francis you want to say something francis yes okay and so how to also better homes for slum dwellers okay and what is the uh, greatest thing that uh, 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 the city by church can come together against persecution right have one voice against persecution speak against persecution yes hmm. hold on my clothes social transformation hmm. so like uh, i met with a lot of like rowdy groups and all so because of their poverty and hungry they get into the like, rowdyism and become yeah, gangsters yes, and yes so how to be uh share the the kingdom of God, you are not like that. So how to be? Able, but the thing is, like they are not acceptable first. Mm. It's a very uh, huge work we need to do for them. If we are saying, okay, we will take care of us. Uh, okay, who are you? Like you're very rude. So how to be? Uh, how to impact with them? How to impact their lives? I think God is stirring your hearts towards gangsters, like He stirred up the heart of uh, that man who I don't remember his name who went to New York and. Uh, Know, many gangs in New York. Um, uh, what is his name? Very famous man. Anyone knows his name? Uh, Nikki Cruz, and he, you know, he impacted Nikki Cruz's life. Can't get his name, and he had a very big organization. Uh, forget uh, his name. Uh, some somewhere in the 1960s and 70s, you know, a uh, great man who uh, God just tearing of his heart, burden for these. Huh? in yeah he went to the united states in new york and um, you know and uh, uh, worked with these uh, gangsters many gangs and many young boys and girls joined this gang into drugs and everything how he impacted their lives so powerfully and you know had a ministry over there and uh, one of them is nikki cruz and he writes his book i've read nikki cruz's son book and so you know um yeah, David uh, Wilkinson. Yes, thank you, Nina. I was looking out. Yeah, David Wilkinson. Thank you, Nina. I was waiting for you to answer that question. Anyway, so yeah, so you know, he did such a great uh, job, and there was nobody who was willing to go, but young girls and boys, the you know, teenage years, you know, getting into gangs and uh, destroying their lives. But what an impact he um, had! So he would just have crusades and meetings, and you know, just go on the streets in the night and talk to them. It was dangerous. So many times, Nikki Cruz has also threatened he will kill them, and they went into his meetings and had set bombs and you know disturbed everything but how God and the Holy Spirit really powerfully uh, touched them and ministered. So it's basically powerful, the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, will minister to them. So you can partner with like-minded people and start that ministry, Francis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. 
Um, yeah, I think it's David Wilkerson. Yes, uh, Jack. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Jack and uh, Nina. Any questions on this lesson? We have two more chapters to go. Any more? Any questions? Uh, can you give him the mic, please? In marketplaces, when we are talking about the marketplace transformation, mm -hmm. can you tell any few points like uh, how to practically can do? Like there are so many challenges mm -hmm. to do the ministry in marketplaces or to just uh, be like a believer and not to, uh, I mean, in any way. Uh, go against to, the, the uh, protocol that is yeah. there. Uh, yes. Uh, so any of you in the marketplace here, online students, um, know how we can bring about so, uh, transformation in the marketplace? Any ideas? I know of people who are working in the corporates who start um, um, have started prayer fellowships. They have a chapel in like um, uh, here in um, uh, you know the golf thing in uh, what is it called uh, the spark in the the tech park and um, outer outer ring road that goes towards Koramangla. You know, uh, there is Embassy Golf Link. It's called Embassy Golf Link. And uh, there they have a chapel there. Okay, so in the chapel, they, the Christians have started, uh, believers have started uh, prayer. And so many of them have come and many lives have been impacted when they have received answers for prayer. Some of them also meet uh, outside in cafeterias. You know, they have their own groups and Bible studies in the cafeteria. And one-on-one uh, -on -one impact is happening. And, um, um, uh, you know, many of them are impacted because uh, they're going through divorce. They're going through marriage problems. They're going through uh, suicidal issues. And, uh, you know, uh, so they invite them to church. Like when we have big Sundays and all, many people invite their um, colleagues uh, they also have uh, their own uh, like Bible studies, uh, if, you know, among their colleagues and all of that they've started. So these small ways they impact, even give out uh, some uh, literature, some books, like some of our APC publications, they just give it out. And uh, they have these four C's on their leadership things. Uh, the four C's, uh, um, uh, the, yes, the table thing that we have created. You know, uh, that like the placard that you've created on the tables. So you know, just keep that and, you know, have uh, minister to people. I know one lady works in the corporate, um, you know, just a smile. She has led people to uh, Christ, you know, and um, uh, just through her joy of the Lord. People have asked her, what is the great joy that you have always smiling, always happy and all that? Just led them to the joy of the Lord, you know. So she tells me, and very simple lady uh, working in the corporate, um, you know, in the admin field, but just powerfully because she comes from a non Christian background and, you know, she has the so zealous to share the gospel with others. Some of these few things that can be done. Is there any particular topics to to just uh, start with? Like, see, when we go to villages and all to preach them to. I mean, to reach them is little easy. Mm. Like we can, uh, because they are uneducated. The people who are in workplaces are very educated. Mm. And we have to reason them when we are telling something. Mm. So is there any particular topics or subjects we can start with? We can start with, um, yes, we can start with, um, uh, like some of the topics in, you know, uh, uh, hope. Hope in hopelessness, you know, uh, uh, strength in times of adversity, you know, and um, um, what else? Uh, how to overcome fear, anxiety. Uh, what is love? Everybody is looking for love, you know, acceptance, respect. What is love? So talking about love and going on to you know, the God of love who loves us the way he loves us. Um, you know, um, talking about character, you know, and talking about biblical examples of character, uh, like Daniel and Joseph. 
basically how to give hope you know to people in their crises in their situations uh, in their difficulties and we have the god of hope lead them to that so these are the important things hope love yes nikhil okay anyone else wants to add to these questions please feel free online students how are you listening to people's progress <laughs> things like uh, once uh, i thought this uh, started education things like as it's written here marketplace so i started just uh, not to earn money just uh, like uh, it was free coaching i used to teach people children only so what i used to do like first when i started that time i used to take only 100 rupees money for one hour coaching then after that what i did i stopped because children their village they don't have that much money to pay so what i did i started just free coaching i used to give then after that so little little they like increased and after that what i used to do like uh, i used to share from bible like stories how i used to say like the lord is my sacred i don't mention any religion any things i don't used to mention so i just used to share about the stories about things so sometimes what happens if children have anything like pain anything so i used to tell come i'll pray for you so i used to pray for them so they used to go in their home they used to tell mom he did something like this something like this so like that i uh, two three families they started believe on jesus christ like how you did this how you did how you uh, did healed them can you pray for me also i have this things i have this problem i have this problem so like that that place i started church in that place only how 10 people and 15 people i that place only i started because of education and after that 200 people i used to teach 200 children only and after that i started education like like who people they are not educated little little so like how i ministered to, through that things education amazing yes in the marketplace very good i know of one of my relatives who live in chennai you know um, she is a banker and she took voluntary retirement and uh, she used to teach all the slum the sweepers children the maids children and all come there to her house about 50 60 they'll come there they'll play for some time she has a big compound they'll be playing then they'll all get ready and they'll all sing some gospel songs and she'll share one story and then she'll teach them you know they'll do they're going to school so they'll help them in the homework and all and then uh, they'll go away and then you know some of them have gone into finishing their 10th grade and to college and they have got some nice jobs they still come and thank her and all just very you know just showing the love of christ in a very simple way and i used to really admire her she used to have three or four flasks she'll keep it out in her uh, veranda on the parapet uh, that she has built near her doorstep and a flask and uh, you know sugar and uh, the glasses so all the sweepers and the ma the maids and cleaners in that area uh, will come to our house and they'll have uh, a uh, tea from you know a uh, hot tea and i remember when i went to a house one of them said amma the tea is over then she said wait wait i'll make it for you and she made another whole flask and kept it there you know just such a heart in just small way showing the love of uh, jesus uh, to uh, people okay yes yeah so social transfer uh, marketplace he gave you some ideas on um, what we can do also just prayer and allowing the min ministering you know yeah yes prince one example also one i said like for me i i feel like uh, in marketplace and business place it's how we uh, live actually how we uh, carry the kingdom of god affects more uh, one example like uh, when we used to work i used to work for my uh, brother's cafe so uh, we used to keep this uh, bible verses like in the inside of the walls like even sometimes the little word just hope don't give up and all this and uh, we used to uh, keep bible verses and they used to uh, like uh, minister to them even if they are non believers but when they read some scriptures they get encouraged and we heard testimonies and one more uh, is like we used to go and talk to them our mom 
our brother my brother's main motive is like to spread gospel through uh, the cafe so we heard like their people said when we came here we feel peace inside of us we don't know like uh, our cafe is in the middle of all the ca academics so most people were hostlers who come from other towns and cities so they told like when we feel sad when we are little disturbed when we came here we feel that peace inside in this place and also uh, we used to me and along with me there's one boy from our church he used to work as a part time so uh, when we see some people uh, alone sitting very disturbed we used to go and talk to them hi how are you doing what's happening and we used to ask is there anything that we can pray for like we don't need to have to tell them to be converted but we can pray for them and most people were actually willing to be get prayed despite of the religion they are like yeah you can pray for me and like that we saw like people coming uh, and we started to invite church come and see we didn't told actually like forcefully conviction or something but we just told like if this sunday we are having this meeting if you are interested you can come and see and when they come we heard like they feel something different in the atmosphere there they feel that freedom joy when they step in and we heard of uh, medical students who are about to suicide but they came in the church and they changed their mind and gave life to jesus so i feel like how we represent how we carry is important in the uh, business and marketing places yes thank you very good yes very nice thank you for sharing thank you for the wonderful work you are doing any more thoughts any questions <laughs> anand is saying that online students are not talking <laughs> they are actually uh, chatting with me on the on the chat section okay no questions we'll we'll start uh, lesson 9 okay uh, brothers and sisters fathers and brothers brothers and fathers sisters and mothers okay so we said kingdom building is all about building whom people so when we build people is it about uh, you know having programs to build them or just preaching or what do we do teaching them disciple them how do you disciple them programs teaching yes journey with them right of course preaching teaching is very important having workshops weekend schools very important having programs very important but also mentoring them you know uh, life coaching one on one we need to mentor them and coach them okay so we need all of us who are or all of them who are mature in their faith we need to teach and impart those who are weak in the faith like paul says weak in the faith means those who are new in the faith those who are still growing in their uh, faith those who are children or babes in the faith basically better word to use okay so some of us can be brothers some of us can be fathers okay based on our age some of us can be sisters and mothers based on our age but what should we do we need to mentor we need to impart we need to teach we need to journey along with uh, people okay a uh, good example is whom in the bible in the in the in the new testament paul yes right he mentored many people even though he was doing great extensive work in the kingdom of god he was somebody who was also personally mentoring who are some of the people he mentored timothy titus philem uh, onesimus the runaway slave of uh, philemon okay so all of these people he personally mentored them okay and uh, how does he refer to them when he speaks about them what does he talk about timothy how does he call timothy before he says co-workers fellow workers my son in the faith okay my son in the faith but does he forever use this phrase my son in the faith no what does he yes my brother my co-laborer my the, a minister of god so we see that even though uh, timothy was a son to uh, 
to Paul and he mentored him and nurtured him. You know, once he comes to the stature of spiritual maturity and Paul sees that, he uh, relates to him in a totally different uh, level. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, that, uh, do we have uh, this kind of mentoring in our churches where people are brothers, fathers, mothers, sisters? Actually, few of them, only few of them do it. Like we don't, most of them, yeah, we don't do it. Uh, most of our uh, interactions can be very business-like. It's not relational. Uh, it's not something that is heart to heart. That is not, uh, you know, where we're not sharing ideas and, you know, transformation. The relationship is very su superficial. Okay. Uh, why do you think it's so superficial? Why do mature people in the faith uh, don't mentor and impart and teach and train those who are babes in the faith or children in the faith? They're ignorant of this fact or this calling, yes. Yes, thank you, Nina Santosh. It's time consuming. You're taking? I think all important points. Please speak in the mic, yes. Yeah, um, like we have it like, like like a lot of risk. We are opening our everything to the other person. Uh, yes, it's a risk because people say, hey, what if they look at my weaknesses? Mm. What if they judge me? What if they think, hey, this person is really like, you know, is mentoring me, but look at him, he's or her, she's also having their own uh, challenges. Yes, it is. But, uh, you know, many of them become very lonely in their Christian work. Yes or no? Now, many Christian leaders, Christian ministers become very lonely in their uh, uh, in their work. Uh, or even when they're struggling or going through challenges, they become very lonely. Why? I'm talking about Christian leaders and ministers or kingdom builders. They don't want to share their uh, ideas with anyone else because they think that they're uh, only their agenda. Okay, they are not kingdom minded. They don't want to share their ideas with anyone else. What else? And maybe uh, <coughs> they have their own battles and they are like, they want to deal with them by their own. They have their own battles. They want to deal it in their own. Uh, why do they want to? Why do they want to deal it by themselves? You being a leader going and, and asking if help I for go someone. And ask help for someone, it will may put me down in before them. Yeah, it can be sometimes a pride, or sometimes most of the time it can be. Hey, they will judge me. Yeah, they'll mock me. They'll criticize me. They'll laugh at me. You know, uh, what if that happens? Or you know, my reputation will go down. My yeah, reputation will. As a leader, but if I'm doing this, they. Uh, yes, my reputation will go down. Jackin says lack of trust in others. Yes, lack of trust because you know my reputation will go. You know, I'll be questionable. I'll be there. You know, in front of everybody, and they will judge me and condemn me. Okay, but. Uh, you know, uh, but when challenges come, we can, you know, fall under that pressure or, you know, we can give in and can destroy our life and um, ministry. Or Sometimes we're so busy doing ministry that we don't build genuine friendships, right? Sometimes we're so busy teaching others, imparting to others, counseling others, that we don't see a need to take care of our own selves okay uh, but it's important right that we build relationships even in the body of christ with other uh, ministers so that when we go through struggles and challenges we can go to them and when they go through struggles and challenges that they come to um, us now even as we become brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers to other believers pastors leaders uh, you know um, in the city what are some of the challenges we face on a one to one, if you're a, you know, as two leaders, you are being, a, you know, co working with each other, or you're being a brother and a fa brother to each other, or you're being a sister to each other. What are some of the challenges? Like Nina jo uh, Santo said, time, right? I have to give in, you know, I have to spend time to know them, their family. They have to spend time knowing me, my family, coming to my church, seeing my setup. Uh, what else? Step, 
Yes, we must be always available. They must be available for us. We must be available for them. You know, we must spend time praying and worshiping and seeking God uh, uh, together. You know, when they go through difficulties, we must be there. And when they go through success, rejoice with them. When we go through difficulties, they have to be with us. When we go through success, they should be with us. You know, we need to receive from their gifting, anointing, and ministry. And they need to receive from our gifting, ministry, and anointing. Okay. And both of us must honor each other for who we are and what God has called us to. Okay. We must partner with each other as friends. We must sacrifice, give for their personal welfare, family, you know. And when people hate, criticize, judge, mock, or when each of us fall down, we need to be there to help each other. So all this is very, very time consuming. And I think that is why people don't really want to be brothers and sisters too each other okay but uh, do you think it's important yes. yes it is very important right and i think some of us we need to come to the place where we are brothers and sisters okay we'll stop class here thank you all for um, joining class i think we just have one and a half lessons and we'll finish it uh, next monday okay okay have a blessed week everyone thank you all um, have a good day have a blessed day god bless thank you